Okay, it's part two then of oxidative phosphorylation. And here's where we start to get to the tricky bit. So we've got, let's draw a green one, why not? Here's our mitochondrion with its kind of folded, it's a bit of a rubbish mitochondrion, never mind. Um, it, it's folded membrane, it's inner membrane, the crystal has been folded over to maximize the surface area. The matrix um, is going to be this pinky, it's not really pink, I'm just dotted it pink, uh, is the liquid inside where the, the Krebs cycle occurs, there's all the ribosomes floating around in there, the DNA and so on, but we're really interested in this uh, membrane, the cristae, and the other part we'll come across is um, the gap between the cristae and the outer membrane, which is called the inner membrane space. So those are our two bits we're going to be interested in. So if we zoomed into that, um, Here's my Christo a bit closer. It would be covered with um, enzymes which are embedded in the membrane surface, just like when you did back in the first unit and you had cell membranes, you had proteins and, and you know, glycoproteins, glycolipids, all those things floating around. They're in this membrane. By having them on a membrane next to each other, it just makes the whole thing a lot more efficient uh, rather than having them free floating. And in fact, you find in um, some uh, prokaryotes they have a, a kind of the membrane folds in it's called a mesosome so that they can actually have a, a larger surface area for, for their respiratory enzymes it's a different process but um the folding of, the, of a membrane is it, it's a key thing okay so this would be happening all the way over that and remember of course this is a three-dimensional object it's not just flat but that's the way we're going to represent it for the moment so i'm going to zoom in once more and i'm not going to draw the entire um phospholipid membrane out but we know that this is a phospholipid membrane okay there isn't really a line there that's just how I've drawn it now I'm going to stick with the version they use uh, in your textbooks to keep life fairly easy for us or as easy as we can make it we're going to have one two three four of these protein complexes floating uh, in our membrane there we go and then we get to the end, and I'm going to have, I'll tell you what, let's use a different colour just to make it stand out. Why not? Uh, it, it's an interesting molecule if you want to look it up. Um, it's ATP synthase. I'm just going to draw it like that. Not the best molecule. <coughs> It'll do for, do for us. So that, that's what we've got. Now this is, this bit here, these four proteins are usually just called complexes. One, two, three. Uh, and four using Roman numerals okay these form our electron transport chain these um, uh, these proteins that, that contain enzymes or coenzymes what their function is is to pass electrons along okay hence this bit is the electron transport chain not the whole thing really it's this this is the bit we're looking at okay this side um, on here is the intermembrane space and on this side we've got the matrix so the ATP synthase is, is poking to the matrix now if you remember if you've watched part one of this you'll know that the key I said is reduced NAD so all of our reduced NAD is going to end up here okay whether it's come from Krebs cycle whether it's come from like uh, from glycolysis link reaction whatever it may be now what happens is as the reduced NAD releases um, its hydrogens, its two hydrogens, those hydrogen atoms get split. Don't call them hydrogen molecules. The hydrogen atoms are split. Um, and if you want to look at this, the, the technical name for this is called um, uh, coenzyme Q reductase, okay? Or sometimes NAD um, dehydrogenase, an enzyme that takes hydrogens off NAD, okay? what it's going to do is it splits those two hydrogens into two hydrogen ions plus two electrons okay so again if we if you're wondering how that breaks down if we go back and do a bit of chemistry um, this is what uh, a hydrogen atom looks like it's got one electron in its outside shell, so there's two of them. Notice I'm not joining them together. They're not a hydrogen molecule. It's not H2, it's two hydrogen atoms. If I take the two electrons off, 
I'm left just with um, two hydrogen ions. Okay, and this is all the NAD is going to be doing. It's just going to be coming here and dropping off its hydrogens. The NAD can then zoom off back and pick up more hydrogens. Notice that if it's lost these electrons, it's lost the hydrogens, the NAD has become oxidized. Okay, this first protein complex has gained electrons. Okay, oxidation is lost, reduction is gain. It's become reduced. So we can talk about saying the reduced NAD, um, the hydrogens are removed, and protein complex one, or if you want coenzyme Q reductase, uh, has become reduced. Okay. So now we've got these two electrons. Now this is the bit that perhaps doesn't seem to make sense. So again, I'm going to go back and do a little bit of chemistry um, and try and get this in your head. If you've got an atom, I'm just going to call it atom A like this, and we have these shells around it. I know if you do chemistry, you might be pointing out that these aren't the proper shells. Don't worry about that. It's just to get your head around it. And what happens is if you've got an electron and you give this atom some energy in some way. What can happen is the electron can jump up to the next electron shell, like that, and it can jump up again, like that. But it doesn't stay up there because it's unstable. Unless you keep pumping the energy in, it becomes unstable and it drops back down again. And as it drops back down, it gives off that extra energy it's picked up. So you can make it jump up, but as it comes down, it'll release the energy. So if you like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm simplifying things here just to get your head into it because I think otherwise this is quite difficult to understand. It doesn't work exactly like this, but I want you to get the idea that electrons moving around can release energy. That's the key bit to it. Electrons being moved around can release energy. So these electrons are then passed from one complex to the other. Now the way it shows you in the book, it looks like they just kind of magically jump across. They don't. There are other molecules involved in, in transporting these, but you don't need to worry what they are. All we need to think is that every time these are passed on, some energy is released. And it turns out that enough energy is released that these complexes will um, move through hydrogen ions. Now I know I've not balanced this all up, but I just want you again to get the idea that it's um, hydrogen ions that um, or protons, if you like, that are being moved through um, these these complexes. So number one, number three, um, and number four. So you might be looking to go, why not number two? Just because it isn't. We'll come back to number two in a second. We pump hydrogens through, and the energy to do that comes from the electrons being passed along the electron transport chain. And we'll leave that one and uh, look at the next part in another video.